Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani. We are back. We're talking about how to assess your blood sugar, your functional glucose tolerance levels at home. Your typical glucose tolerance, mostly done by pregnant women, they'll drink a 75 gram glucose solution in the morning, having fasted eight hours. They'll take their blood sugar and typically sometimes their insulin for 30 minutes um, for two to three hours. And the longer and the higher your blood sugar is up, the more insulin resistant you are. So it's a way of kind of picking up gestational diabetes. The problem is it does not correlate to the real world because unless you're consuming 75 gram glucose drinks, so does that once, then your body may not really have a good example of what you're actually handling in real life. Meaning if you're used to eating like a steak and and broccoli, and then you consume 75 grams of a sugary drink, that may not correlate because your body's not used to seeing that. So you could have a higher reading, even though that may not be something that you do in your real world example. Therefore, it may show high, but it may not be relevant because you don't do that in day in day out basis. So sometimes you can get these false positive readings when you do a high sugary drink, and you're not used to doing that. But when you compare your actual real world meals, then you're totally fine, right? And so you want to actually use examples of what's real and what's happening day in, day out, not using and not use um, analogies of high blood sugar that just don't happen. You're not consuming these high sugary things. So why look at it from that perspective? Keep it functional. That's the word functional glucose tolerance comes in because we're trying to take examples that are functional. They're from your day in, day out life, and they correlate a lot better to reality. So a couple of things that we're going to use here. I like to use Heads Up Health partly because they – connect with my blood sugar meter. I like the Keto Mojo. There'll be a link down below, justinhealth.com slash Keto Mojo. There'll be a link for heads up in the description. You can click there. This is the one I use. I like it because it's got a Bluetooth connector, connects to my phone over here, which allows me to have my blood sugar readings graphed out. I can also import it and plug it into headsuphealth.com so I can see it there as well, and then it graphs it. So it's really nice because I can actually visually see it, and it stores blood sugar readings. Also, this tests ketones, which is great. If you do any ketone testing, use like the Abbott Precision Extra. Those ketone strips are like two or three bucks a piece. Keto Mojo is down to a buck. So a lot cheaper if you want to measure your ketone. So very, very nice. Now, how it works is this. You want to actually take a meal. Let's say it's fasting and you're taking your breakfast. You're going to test your blood sugar in the morning. You want to see where your blood sugar reads hour one. Sorry, uh, fasting baseline right away. That's your fasting reading. Then you want to test your blood sugar one hour after a meal, so fasting, get your reading. Next, we're going to have a eat your meal. Then one hour later, take your reading. Two hours later and three hours later. And the goal is we want to be a fasting starting out. We want to be below 100 starting out. Hour one, we want to be below 140 to 120. Ideally below 120, but 120 to 140 within hour one. Hour two, we want to be below 120, maybe even below 100. And hour three, definitely below 100. So we want to be fasting below 100, hour one, 140 to 120 or lower, hour two, below 120 to 100 or lower, hour three, below 100. And this gives you the ability to connect to your phone and you can actually graph the readings out. And so links down below for this one. This is a great one. I have like four or five blood sugar beans. This is my favorite one. They have their little, my little unboxing right here. It comes in this box like this. We're talking the Keto Mojo Gluc GK Plus meaning glucose and ketones, right? It's got both of those. Their ketone strips are dollar a piece, pretty cheap, most cheapest on the market. And their blood sugar strips are pretty good. I just ordered 60, I think, for like 15 bucks. So pretty good. They come in these types of packaging. You think it'd be difficult to open, but it's not bad. You just rip like this. You think it'd rip through, but it doesn't. That's pretty good. And it's nice to have it in the package because it prevents it from oxidizing so you get a more accurate reading which is great. So first thing I do is I turn this guy on like this. Okay. Then I just stick the blue part in at the bottom. And you'll see there's a little channel at the top, the little channel right there. That's where your blood goes. So now it's telling me it's blinking right there. That's saying, hey, give me some blood. And so I use my little blood pricker right here. You put a, a little lancet right in the middle, just so you can see. That's my little needle right there. Put it in. And I keep it like at the lowest setting. I think I keep it at like one or two. Pull this guy back. Hit the side of my pinky. You can use an alcohol swipe to wipe it down. That's always best. Or wash your hands ahead of time. My hands have already been washed recently. Just like that. Little prick. A little bit of blood just like that. And then we'll just grab it. Like that. And it'll give you the countdown. Four, three, two. There we go. 90. Okay, so now my meal was... 
I ate at two o'clock today. I had cut up ribeye steak for my leftover dinner with four eggs and I had a green apple. And so I'm down at 90 in three hours. So remember I said, you want to be 120 to 140 with an hour one, below 120 to 100 an hour two, and then below 100 an hour three. So I'm about three hours in, I'm at 90. So that's good. Let me show you a reading from last week. And then I could go on the app like this and there'll be a connect button. And you hit the connect button and then it allows you to sync up. You just keep your um, reader right next to your Bluetooth and it will import it in. Now, let me kind of show you a little bit here. And it comes with this little guy here, it comes with a little bag, little um, holder, and then it has some testers, which is great. So you can actually calibrate your blood sugar and ketones on here. It's got some extra lancets like so. And then you can see it actually has some ketones here as well. And they keep them in these little strips, which, you know, not quite as convenient, but the, the thinking is that they're going to oxidize less and they're going to last longer, which is kind of cool. Okay. All right. So I'll put these away here. And let me show you how I import everything in. So you can go to ketomojo.com and you can actually import it in there. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you can see what I'm looking at. That'll be pretty cool. Okay. This will be great. All right. Here we go. So if I go to Keto Mojo, I think they have a separate site for the lab stuff. Yeah, I think it's my mymojohelp.com. Yeah, and I can log in like this. My password's already saved, which is pretty cool. And then I have my readings from last week, which is pretty cool as well. So this is my reading from like last Friday, 74. And then I can go to my previous readings. Right here, I'm going to give you an example from last week, and then I should be able to also graph them as well, which is pretty cool. On my app, I can definitely graph it. Graph it. Yeah, so here you go. So here's a cool reading here just to kind of show you guys. I had dinner last, let's see here, it was on May 5th. It was a little bit late of a dinner. Let's see here. Okay, this is an afternoon, and I ate here. So you can see right here on screen. I ate here at lunch was at 3.08, okay? My, that was fasting. I was at 85, okay? And then 91, I took two in a row. Then one hour after eating at 3.46, that was 110. Remember, we wanna be 120 to 140 or low, so I was 110. And then two hours after reading, here, I was back to 96. So I went to 346 here, and then I went to 103. Now, if you also see here, check us out with Heads Up Health. This is overlaying a couple of readings here. I'm just Oh, it's using the rolling average. That's why it's confusing. It was giving you two readings here because it's got this green reading here, which is a rolling average. So I'm not sure how to turn that one off. I'd have to look at that one. Um, let me see if I can turn it off. That's why it's giving me two readings. That's why it's a little bit confusing. Um, to read that. Okay, here we go. So here's my last Friday, right? We talked about 85 was fasting. Then about one hour later, about 40 minutes later, I was 110. And then two hours later, I was back to 96. So that's my little functional glucose tolerance there. And this was my Thursday night meal. Okay, this was a little bit later. I ate at nine. I was doing working late on my book. Um, this is fasting, 91. Okay, my dinner was a I had ribeye steak and broccoli. Blood sugar shot up an hour later to 120. And then at 11 o'clock, right around bedtime, back to 93. So I passed that glucose tolerance test, right? Fasting below 100, check. Want to be 120 to 140 or below. 121, good. And then hour two, I'm back below 100. Remember, hour three, below 100 is okay. But hour two, I was below 100 as well, which is kind of kind of cool. And then you guys can use headsuphealth.com. I'll share this tab with you so you can easily log in. A couple of things about Heads Up that I like. Links down below. Create your account. It's free. Now, a couple of things you can do. Files. You can take any of your labs that you have. Let's say you have old PDFs and you want to import it. You can do concierge service. I've already uploaded blood work from last year. Click the upload button. Put concierge. Put like, you know, date, name, name the lab, and then drag it in there. And then you'll hit upload and you're good. Mine's already here. It's uploading right now, which is pretty cool. And then on the dashboard, you can integrate the different connectables that you have. So I have integrated right now my Fitbit. Let's see, where is it? Fitbit's right here. This is telling me about calories right now. Yeah, so steps, 
So 15,000 steps yesterday, right now, end of the day, I already have like 16,500. I'm like, way, I'm doing really good today. Ketones right here. And so you can look at your keto mojo. I have it imported, which is really cool. So I can go to reports right here, click reports, and I can do glucose from my keto mojo and I can do day. And so here's from last Friday, right? Remember 308, 85, an hour later, I was at 110. And then Two hours later, I was 96, which is pretty cool. And then I can do the day earlier. Remember I said May 4th. Remember this was the same reading. So this was 9 o'clock at night, 91. An hour later, 121. And then an hour later, back below 100 again. So you can easily import this here in Heads Up Health. The cool thing about Heads Up is the importation of like your Oura Ring, um, your Fitbit, so you can track your steps. I can have my sleep here, right? I can have my steps, my calories. I can have all of my readables, your aura ring. You can put your HRV in here as well. You can upload your lab test, which is great. So if you have a bunch of labs that you want to just import in, so it, someone else will go in here and actually type them up for you, then you can go to reports and then you can graph everything. You can look at your previous CRP, your previous homocysteine, et cetera, which is pretty cool. So again, this is Dr. Jay here. just wanted to review that with you guys. Functional glucose tolerance gives you a great way to look at your insulin sensitivity. The more resistant your cells are, the longer the blood sugar stays up and the higher it stays up. That's an indirect look at how your body's handling your actual food. So you can test it with foods that are higher sugar, higher carb, or more inflammatory. That blood sugar will stay up higher and longer. You can also test it and start reducing the carbs in your meal or go for a five or 10 minute walk. You'll see your blood sugar get better. And that's a good sign. So again, fasting below 100, one hour, 120 to 140 or lower, two hours below 120, Hour three, below 100. And hour two, you can, can even be below 100. Mine, we're all below 100 within hour two. That's where you want to be ideally. The more sensitive you are means the less insulin you make. The less insulin you make, the less chance of inflammatory byproducts, advanced glycation end products, um, microvascularizations, uh, peripheral neuropathies in the extremities, eye hemorrhaging, brain hemorrhaging, strokes, dementia, Alzheimer's, right? Insulin, the insulin degrading enzyme in the brain is the same enzyme that is responsible for cleaning up plaque in the brain. So if you have more insulin there, it's mopping up that insulin and not mopping up the plaque in the brain. So just think about that. This is a great way to assess it. And then it's not just about assessing it. Now, how do you graph it? How do you look at it so you have easy recall? My general recommendation is take three meals a week, take a random breakfast, random lunch, random dinner, and see how you do. If you're testing high, it's too high or, or too high for too long, cut back the carbs, add in some movement. That's the first two places to go. In. And then we can also add in supplementation like magnesium, chromium, cinnamon, gymnema. We can add in nutrients like that to help bring the blood sugar down by improving insulin sensitivity from a supplement level. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, links down below. If you want to reach out to myself for more functional medicine support on this topic, there'll be a link down below. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.